two teams with distinctly dis dissimilar styles, but similar strengths match up in this final game of the quarterfinal round of this year's GNAC Basketball Championships presented by Under Armour here at Carver Gym at Western Washington University. I'm Robert Lowry, Sean Wally alongside. And again, these two teams playing in this nightcap, the University of Alaska Anchorage and Seattle Pacific University, the Falcons number five and the Seawolves number four are both very strong defensive teams, but they do it in very different ways. If you are at all a fan of a GNAC basketball, you know that the University of Alaska Anchorage, they want to force turnovers. They want their defense to fuel their offense. They want to get up and down the floor if they can. And again, defense is the name of their game. They don't have it this year on the back of their jerseys. This year it's on the front of their warm-ups. The word mayhem and that's exactly what they want to cause defensively. Seattle Pacific, very sound rotational defense under their head coach, Mike Simonson, and they're gonna to need to play that kind of defense and not get into an up and down game, not turn the ball over, shoot the ball well, and hope, come, hopefully to come out of a win against UAA. But in the two previous meetings, it's been the Seawolves coming out on top in the game that was played in Anchorage back in early December, it was UAA winning 62 to 54. And then in the game played just uh, on the 23rd of February in Seattle, UAA came on top with a 64-54 victory. Interestingly, Seattle Pacific held a 54 points in each of those games. And UAA scored nearly an identical number of points, 62 in the first meeting, 64 in the second. And one player we're going to want to keep an eye on tonight, Sean, is a newcomer to the Great Northwest Athletic Conference who has had some kind of season, Vishay Rab, a guard. She's really done it all for the University of Alaska Anchorage this year. As a matter of fact, as she comes into the conference, she is the GNAC Newcomer of the Year and a first-team all-GNAC selection, averaging 16.8 points a game, fifth best in the conference, 6.3 rebounds, eighth best in the conference. She's also fifth in steals and second in free throw accuracy. As far as Seattle Pacific is concerned, Ashley Alter leads them onto the floor tonight. She is a GNAC second team selection this year, averaging 15.2 points and 6.3 rebounds. That is, those are both seventh best in the conference numbers this year. Record-wise, Alaska Anchorage comes on floor. 18 and 9 overall, 10 and 8 in the GNAC conference. Interestingly, they have, and this, this to me seems unusual, they have not played a single neutral floor game this year. Neutral floor game here tonight. Seattle Pacific, 14 and 12, 9 and 9 in the GNAC conference, and they're 1 and 2 in neutral floors. Head coach Ryan McCarthy in his 10th year at UAA, 263 wins and 52 defeats in his 12th year overall, including a couple at Northwest and Nazarene. 276 wins and 65 defeats overall. He was the GNAC and is the GNAC Coach of the Year for the years 2015, 17, 18, 19, and 2020. Mike Simonson in his fourth year at Seattle Pacific, 49 and 76 overall. So interesting matchup between the Falcons and the Seawolves. Seawolves trying to complete the sweep of the Falcons this year. And now let's send it down to our public address announcer for the introduction of tonight's starting lineups. At guard, a 6'2 sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon, wearing number two, Maya Hoff. At guard, a 5'7 sophomore from Muckateel, Washington, Number 14, Hunter Biran. At guard, a 5'9 sophomore from Portland, Oregon, number 20, Anna Eddy. At forward, a 5'11 senior from Stanwood, Washington, number 22, Ashley Alter. And at forward, a 6'2 sophomore from Beaverton, Oregon, number 30, Natalie Hoff. 
Seattle Pacific is coached by Mike Simonson. Fans now are designated home team, the Seawolves from Alaska Anchorage. At guard, a 5'5 senior from Chugiak, Arkansas, Alaska, number two, Nicole Pinckney. At guard, a 5'6 sophomore from Shorewood, Illinois, number five, Jasper Evans. At forward, a 5'9 junior from Springfield, Minnesota, number 12, Vashe Rab. At guard, a 5'8 senior from Anchorage, Alaska, number 13, Jenna Hajdukovic. And at forward, a 6'2 sophomore from Casper, Wyoming, number 14, Kate Robertson. The Alaska Anchorage Seawolves, they're coached by Ryan McCarthy. Fans at GNAC promotes good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants, officials, in a positive manner. Profanity, racial comments, or other intimidating or disruptive actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or other fans. Well, last year in uh, the GNAC championships, Alaska Anchorage, they lost to Central Washington, the team we just saw defeat Simon Fraser 80 to 65. And in last year's first round, Seattle Pacific lost to, or beat Alaska Fairbanks 78-48, and then lost to Alaska Anchorage 57 to 50. So this is a matchup of the same two teams we saw in the quarterfinals last year. Ball in the air, Alaska Anchorage in the white, and they will start with the basketball to begin tonight's contest and the Sea Wolves gonna work the ball inside if they can. Bad pass though and a turnover to start the contest for UAA. Starters for the Sea Wolves, Pinckney, Evans, Rab, Hajdukovic and Robertson. The Falcons match with Hoff, Biren, Bishop, Eddie and Alter and Hoff. Seattle Pacific Alter with the basketball. To Biren, they work in the lane to Hoff, and Hoff with an up and under with a left hand lost it. Or actually, it came up a little bit short, but on the rebound, it was tipped off a UAA player, so it'll stay Falcons basketball. Falcons with a little bit of a size advantage on the inside with the Hoff sisters, both listed at six feet two inches. Alaska Anchorage with Robertson at 6'2 in the pivot. She went from Casper, Wyoming play basketball in Anchorage. You can probably hear Ryan McCarthy. He is within our microphone shot. He is not happy with that out of bounds call that went to SPU. Missed three by the Falcons and down floor Pinckney with the basketball, quarterbacking the Sea Wolves. Evans with it around the screen. Free throw line right, pass off. Alaska gets it to Rab. I'm looking forward to watching this young woman play. Averaging 16.8 a game. Here is a missed shot, a runner in the lane by Alaska's Jana Hajdukovic. And now Seattle Pacific with the basketball. Maya Hoff, off right to Alter. Alter to a backdoor cut, but no shot available for Eddie. Seattle Pacific maintains control of the basketball, but the shot clock is now down at five. Here is Hoff in the lane, Toff to her sister, lays it up and misses it, no good. But there was a foul call, so Natalie Hoff will now step up to the free throw line. You can see it right here. Here's the penetration, the bounce pass, and Hoff fouled as she went up as getting her across the arm. It was Hajdukovic. Ryan McCarthy talking to an official right now. Wanted to travel in the lane, didn't get it. First free throw is up and good. So Seattle Pacific with the initial point of the contest. Well, Ryan is a high energy coach. There's no question about that. Second free throw also down. Officials for the night, Leslie Smith, Courtney Duncan, and Zach Wild. Seattle Pacific on the defense. Here's a pull up pop. Missed shot on the outside by Hajdukovic. And now Seattle Pacific into the forecourt. Double team comes. Seattle Pacific gets it out to the back door down low to Hoff. 
Spins, shoots, and hitting on the inside is Natalie Hoff once again. Seattle Pacific up 4 nothing early in the contest. Not a and lot. And handling the UAA pressure pretty well. Not a lot more Robertson could have done on the no. defensive end for UAA. No, absolutely correct. Seattle Pacific beats the Seawolves down floor and scoring in transition is Eddie. That's a bit of a surprise. You would think that UAA is going to be the transition team here tonight, but Seattle Pacific there, and now there's going to be a, a foul, an offensive foul on an illegal screen set by Vichier Rab. And as they want to do, here comes five subs in for Central for the uh, Sea Wolves of the University of Alaska Anchorage. Haley Burfield has come on floor. Robertson does stay on the floor, so four new players on floor. Rachel Ingram is out there along with the Renee Sea Wolves need Bay. those those fresh legs because of the mayhem trapping yeah. and the pressing they always do. Seattle Pacific with the basketball in their forecourt, leading it early six to nothing. Right corner, open three on the way up and good by Anna Eddy. Eddy makes it nine nothing. And we're at the seven minute mark and UAA has yet to score. And here's an up and under shot miss, but the put back on the inside off the Ingram miss by Robertson gives the Seawolves their first points on the night. Robertson averaging just over six points a game, gets the first two for the Seawolves. Here for Seattle Pacific is Maya Hoff goes inside. Was it Hoff? I was screened out there. Was it Hoff who got the shot up? It was, and Seattle Pacific up 11 to two. Still six and a half remaining in this first half. Seawolves work the ball across the top. And now a bucket scored on the inside by UAA. Cuts the lead just a bit. A great three there by Haley Burfield. She needed that for her team. And again, the full court pressure, which is your, what you're going to see all night if you're Seattle Pacific. Here's a pull-up pop, getting wide open and missing what looked to be a pretty easy shot was Alter. Seattle Pacific needs to hit the open looks when they get them. Back the other way, a runner by Rihanna Bay. And Bay makes it an 11-7 contest. That was Anaya Moore on the last shot. But Seattle Pacific answers with a basket by Natalie Hoff in the forecourt. 13 to seven the count and a quick 30 second timeout for UAA. I think we'll go ahead and pause quickly back after this. These are the 2023 20, GNAC Women's Basketball Championships. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. Ryan McCarthy not happy with the effort of his Seawolves, apparently, and that's why he calls the quick timeout here. I tell you what, Robert, this is must-see TV being this close to Ryan McCarthy, yep. and he is always animated, always very vocal on the sidelines. I'm not sure if we got this close in 2019. This yeah. might be the first time. No, we were this close then. Okay. And you know what? Wasn't much different. He's very <laughs> intense. There's no question. Kamani Fernandez comes in along with four starters for the University of Alaska Anchorage out of the timeout. And Pinkney going to bring it down floor. Brings out Rab. She'll take a head of the key jumper and miss it. Rebound tipped around and is taken down by Hoff, Natalie Hoff. Alter with the basketball. And there's a travel call. She got it off. 
to Lolo Weatherspoon, who just checked in, but Weatherspoon has shuffled the feet and turns it back over. And if you're playing UAA, you cannot do that. Matter of fact, UAA, 7.59. So essentially eight turnovers a game better than their opponents. They, they have a turnover margin of plus eight. And here is Evans. Jazz making a nice move and putting it up and in with her 11, 11 with her left hand. And then she went to the floor. I don't know what she stepped on down there, but a little bit shaken up. Unfortunately, I think it was our cable attached to our camera on the baseline. Well, you see her go down there in a bit of a bit of a heap. And she's going to come out now quickly. She runs off, no noticeable limp. But Rayanna Bay returns for UAA to give her a bit of a breather. Seattle Pacific bringing the basketball out of backcourt against the pressure. Up ahead to the right side, Anna Eddy. They work at the Hoff. Back out. On the near side to Weatherspoon. Nine to shoot. Beeren with the basketball tried to get it in to Hoff and not able to corral the pass for the turnover. And for Seattle Pacific, that's the second turnover of the contest. 13 to nine. It is Seattle Pacific maintaining the lead. Pinckney gets the handoff as she comes into the right corner. To Rab with it, going to square up, shoot a three, have it rim off, and alter with the rebound for Seattle Pacific. Alaska Anchorage, one of the hotter teams in the conference. They've won four straight coming into this one, including beating Seattle Pacific on February 23rd by 10. Anna Eddy with the basketball, and a foul called as Hunter Biren got the handoff, tried to make a little bit of a penetration and picks up the foul. It's the first personal foul on Pinckney. And Seattle Pacific with the basketball. Moore and Evans return for the Seawolves. Inbounds to Seattle Pacific's altar. Ashley off near side. I thought Beeren was thinking about a three. Instead, Seattle Pacific looking for a little bit of a better shot. 10 on the shot clock. Lob in, well, bad pass there. Good idea on the outside by Eddie, but a bad execution as she was looking in low to Natalie Hoff and wasn't able to get her the basketball. That Second turnover in succession for Seattle Pacific. Roche, Roche, Ro, Rob going to go in and lay it up and in. Vache Rob gets her first bucket tonight and all of a sudden we've got a two-point game and this is as close as as it's been since it was one nothing. Alter with the basketball in the four-court double team. She had Hoff down low, instead pull up Pop and hits it. So Ashley Alter with a big bucket there, the sophomore out of Portland. And here's a three in the left corner. Well, that's what Jana Hajdukovic is able to do, hit from the perimeter, and she makes it a one-point game with her first made three-pointer this night. Shooting 36% from yeah. behind the arc. Well, that's a tremendous percentage. Here is Hoff in the lane, going to go to work on Fernandez. Misses the shot on the, or actually made the shot on the inside. 17-14 as things have heated up. Here's Rob, the transfer out of Augustana. Penetration move by Hajdukovic. Off to Rob. And now here is a drive down the lane and a foul called against Anaya or Anaya Moore. Anaya Moore drew the foul. It was yep. 11 to two Seattle Pacific. They had a nine point advantage. Now they're up three, 17, 14. With 213 so. left in the first quarter. And an offensive foul called 
One of the Seawolves set an illegal pick, legal screen of some variety, and the ball goes back over to Seattle Pacific. Hajdukovic hit with the foul. So Hajdukovic is the one who was guilty of the infraction. Hoff out of backcourt. This is Maya, gets it all the way to the hoop and scores it. Ryan McCarthy can't believe that was so easy. Nobody stopped the penetration for his defense. Rob back the other way gets fouled across the arm as Hoff, Maya, got her, and that'll send Vichet Rob to the free throw line. There's the drive by Hoff for the bucket. Vichet Rob, 5'9", junior, out of Springfield, Missouri, or uh, Minnesota, we should say, Springfield, Minnesota. And again, a transfer out of Augustana. She was a preseason unanimous all-conference selection. And not surprisingly, she was able to live up with that preseason ink as she was named the Newcomer of the Year. And she hits both free throws, and she's good at that. 87.3% from the free throw line. That is second best in the conference this year. 1916, Alter for Seattle Pacific. Get it back outside to Beeren to the corner for Alters three, missed it. Rebound, Rob, she's good at that. To Pinckney, brings it down floor up the near side. Get it back out to Vichet, she's gonna penetrate to the hoop, lay it up, and in and out, gets her own rebound, puts it up, no, and she's called for steps. She missed the shot, got her own rebound, tried to gather herself to go back up, but traveled with the basketball. There's Haley Burfield back in, and Anaya Moore has also returned for the University of Alaska Anchorage with 1.23 left to go in quarter number one. Beeren in the backcourt, and she is fouled as she tried to come up floor against the defense of Rihanna Bay. So that is the fifth team foul on UAA. Seattle Pacific has committed two infractions in that department, at least to this point. And on the fifth, stepping up to the free throw line for Seattle Pacific, it'll be Hunter Biren. First one up, good. Biren, only a 55% free throw shooter this year. You would think she'd be better than that, but there's 50% right there. Yep. 20 to 16, four point lead. Down floor penetrates the Sea Wolves against the Seattle Pacific defense. Missed the three. And the Falcons, with one minute left to go in this first quarter, have the basketball and Alter with it at the free throw line. To Hoff. Natalie moving inside. I make that Maya moving on the inside. And she's called for traveling. And that's a, this is exactly what UAA wants to do. They want you to feel the pressure, turn the ball over, and use that to their advantage to, if they can, transition quickly on to the offensive end. And here's a three on the outside. Missing it was Rachel Ingram. She had a pretty good look at a three there for the Seawolves. And the entry pass knocked away. Nice job defensively by Kate Robertson for the Seawolves. 20 seconds left. UAA is going to use the clock here as the shot clock is off. So the Seawolves with three, going to get a fallaway shot to the right of the lane, no good. And Robertson got the offensive rebound off the missed shot by Moore, but she wasn't able to get it back up in time. So we have the first quarter in the books, and it is the five seed, Seattle Pacific, over the number four UAA Seawolves, 20 to 16. Second quarter action coming your way from the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships presented by Under Armour after this timeout.
And back here at Carver Gymnasium, there's a three in the right corner for Seattle Pacific as we have a couple of highlights to bring us back courtside here with Seattle Pacific leading at 20 to 16. And this brings up that old adage that it is hard to beat a team three times in a season. UAA has already done that to Alaska Anchorage winning two times, now trying to complete the season sweep. And again, both those games were fairly competitive. UAA won by eight and 10, but neither game uh, a particularly big blowout, playing well in that contest. Vishay Rab, she had 28 in that victory, as you mentioned, just uh, a short time ago in Seattle. Both teams with five turnovers. Interesting to note, the Seawolves in this game, but they're only shooting 37%. New player in for Seattle Pacific, Haley Marlowe, wearing the face guard. And now here is a pull-up pop for two on the left of the lane by Ashley Alter. So the Falcons get the first points in quarter number two. Ingram with the basketball. Down low, Robertson turns, shoots and misses. But a foul called on the inside as Hoff got her on the arm. And that's going to put the Seawolves to the free throw line as Kate Robertson is going to step up there for two. Ingram and Rab stay in. Robertson hits the free throw. Robertson, the 6'2 sophomore out of Casper, Wyoming. Yeah. Traded one cold area for another. Boy, no kidding. I, I, I'll be honest with you, Casper, Wyoming is colder than the Lang Anchorage, Alaska. In the forecourt, Alter with the basketball. Gets it out on the perimeter to Marlowe, wearing that face guard. Marlowe trapped in the lane to Hoff, turns, puts it up and in. So Natalie Hoff working tough on the inside and gets the bucket that maintains the lead for Seattle Pacific. Ryan McCarthy saying it's too easy for SPU. Evans is back in after being shaken up a little bit earlier. Here is Pinckney down the lane with the left-hand shot. Rebound tipped out of bounds by the Falcons, so it'll stay UAA basketball with 8.42 left in this opening half of play. And here is the pass, and you can see there is Hoff going to work on the inside. Impress She's an impressive post player. She impressed me last year. Here is a pull-up pop on the baseline by Ingram. Rebound taken down by the Falcons. Alter, down floor. Marlowe, right side, looking for help. Goes underneath the hoop. Hoff not able to. That was Maya Hoff not able to come up with the basketball. Back to Alter. Ball stripped away from her by Evans. Jasper back down floor, going to take it all the way in with the right-hander, missed the shot. Rebound taken down by Rob. Rob couldn't get the shot back up. Rebound tipped around and back out to the Sea Wolves. And now Vichet with the basketball out high. Going to try to settle things down just a bit. Evans into the lane, shot clock at four. Here's going to be a three on the right side. Is up and good. And that makes it a 24-20 contest in favor of the Falcons. Again, full court mayhem pressure defense applying. Left side, three up and good by Natalie Hoff. Hoff so Natalie answers Hoff answers. The three. Great minds think alike. Yeah. Yeah, somebody rang the doorbell and she answered. Move. There were the three. Move. Rab across the top to Evans. Down right to Pinckney. They work it through Robertson to wrap for a three, and she hits it. So let's call it back to back to back threes. UAA shooting 57% from three. Still down, though, by four. Marlowe with the basketball spin dribble out high. Bounce out to Hoff to a cutting alter. Alter lost control of the basketball, and Rab gets it and takes it back the other way herself. Takes it all the way to the hoop and is fouled on the inside. 
She made the penetration on Natalie Hoff. Hoff got a bit of the ball, but a lot of rab, as you can see right there. And that'll send Vichet back to the free throw line, as we mentioned. That's not where you want to put her. 87.3% from the free throw line on the year. Rab did a great job of initiating the contact, forcing the officials to blow the whistle. There's a good look at Vichet as she hits the first. And she could cut this to a two-point edge for Seattle Pacific as she's able to hit here. Rab leading the way for the Seawolves, now with nine points. Well, that's not a surprise. She has led the Seawolves in scoring throughout the course of the season. Rab checks out. She'll get a break. Seattle Pacific gets the ball to Alter. Off right. Weatherspoon with it. Lob it inside, and Fernandez comes away with the steal. Kamani doing a nice job there defensively, fronting in the post. Evans off left. Bay with it, back out to... Anaya Moore with a jumper in the lane, and when she ties the game 27 all. First tie of the contest in Seattle Pacific with 6.07 left to go in the opening half. Going to take a timeout here in this 27-27 tie. We'll step aside as well. These are the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships presented by Under Armour on GNAC.TV. Central is a great place to learn to make yourself better. I was worried coming here as a transfer student and as a first-gen student that I would feel a little alone or a little nervous to make friends. But the physics department has been incredible. They've all been so welcoming. They're providing me with the tools and the knowledge I need to improve myself after the education part is done. So when it comes to getting professionally certified, Central prepares us directly for that. Seattle Pacific, you can see there is Hoff going to work as Natalie working tough down low in Alaska Anchorage. There's their last basket as they get the kind shooter's roll for Anaya Moore. Seattle Pacific back on floor with the basketball. Hunter Beeren into the forecourt with it under tough guarding conditions. Head of the key, Eddie. Back out to Hunter. Right side, three ball on the way. Missed shot by the Falcons. And UAA looking for its first lead of the night. And they're not going to get it as missing the shot in transition. Haley Beerfield. And the rebound tipped out of bounds. It'll stay Falcons basketball. Seattle Pacific has not scored since the 739 mark. So right two about minutes. two minutes. Yeah. Falcons against. Well, full court pressure. And this is gonna, it's, it's relentless is what it is. It just wears at you. Beeren between the circles to Weatherspoon. Lolo back out to Hunter. They will try to work it through the post down low to Hoff. And here's Natalie Hoff putting it up and in on the inside. She is a load on the inside for any defense. She's Big and strong, and she knows how to position herself for easy shots like she did just there. Now a foul. You can see it there. She actually bumped off Fernandez a bit. Kamani doing what she could on the inside, but off a little bit too big and too strong and able to take advantage of the inside positioning. 29-27 Falcons with 5.08 until the halftime intermission. Inbounds to Ingram. Off to Pinckney, she takes it the other way. 
Now out to Rab. Mache has the ball stripped away. Ball loose. And it's going to be a tie-up situation. And the alternating possession stays with UAA. You can see there is a penetration by Rab. And nice uh, defense there by Marlowe as she's the one who initially stripped it away. Inbounds to Rab as we return to action. Off left to Evans. Jasper brings it down the right lane. Swing it out to Pinckney. Shot clock at five, and she fires away. And UAA has its first lead of the contest with 4.44 left in the first. 30 to 29. And coming into the forecourt, Seattle Pacific with the basketball. Weatherspoon off to Alter to a backdoor cut. And that, that was a good idea looking for Marlowe, but Marlowe wasn't able to corral the pass and it went out of bounds. That mayhem defense just suffocating as you take a look at the last three-pointer. High arcing rainbow. That was a beautiful shot. Nicole Pinkney. And Pinkney has the ball into the forecourt once again, trying to extend this lead to Ingram. Off left. Now Rapp says, I'll try. She missed it badly. Ball tipped around, and it went off a Falcon. So it'll stay UAA basketball. Still a head scratcher looking at the field goal shooting, how UAA is winning. They're shooting 38.5%. SPU, on the other hand, shooting 70%. They're just not getting enough shots. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Here's Rab. Goes to work. Ball knocked away. Good defense by Seattle Pacific. And now the Falcons nearly give it back away. Evans, though, is going to get called for the foul as she tried to intercept the pass intended for Marlowe. So a foul called against UAA. That's their first here. And he's, boy, I tell you, not many fouls here in the second quarter. Three by the Falcons. One now by the Seawolves. Behind the back dribble into the forecourt by the Falcons, but then bad pass. And Pinckney speeds it into the forecourt, off left. Three ball on the way by Ingram. Very Great. good sign for the Seawolves. If their shooting percentage improves, look out. Yeah, up 33-29. The Falcons were up 22 to 16 early in this second quarter. But it's been Seawolf since then. Hoff with the basketball. Natalie gonna back down, back down, spin, put it up, missed the shot. Rebound, Hoff tips, but Evans for the Seawolves come away with the basketball. Up ahead to Fernandez. She gets the ball, return it. Here is Rab, crashes down the lane, bodies on the floor, foul called. A nice drive by Rab. Initiating the contact, blocking foul on SPU. As Here's the drive by Rab. Hoff was there, also trying to get in defensively. I think that was Alter. Whatever the case, it's going to be free throws for Rab once again. And Vache, Rab, having a good game already. Nine points, three rebounds. She's got a steal. And she's three of three from the, or make that four of four from the free throw line. Now five of five. 34-29 as the Seawolves try to build on this lead. I'll tell you one thing, Rab, I was just noticing it there on that shot. She stands a good six inches back from the free throw line. Watch it next time when she shoots at the free throw line. That was, a, that was an interesting uh, camera angle there that showed exactly how she sets up shop. We noticed that during the regular season down at St. Martin's. I broadcast this, this season on air at SMU and I was noticing that as well. It's like it's so strange to see. You better not shoot it short if you're gonna be that far back from the line. Here is UAA scrambling defensively and knocking the ball away. Skyler Berry, the 6'3 sophomore out of Portland, is in now for the Falcons to give uh, Natalie Hoff a bit of a break. Inbounds to Maya. They work it around the perimeter into the corner. No three-point shot available, but they get it in to 
Maya Hoff, and she can't get a shot away before the shot clock violation. That's UAAC Wolf defense right there to perfection. Mayhem is working. That yeah. is 11 turnovers now by Seattle Pacific. That defense is suffocating. Yeah, and this has been the UAA trademark ever since Ryan McCarthy arrived up in Anchorage. Evans, or make that more with the basketball for UAA. Angles off right, goes behind the back on the dribble. Near side. Six to shoot. Anchors with the basketball. Bay with it, has the ball knocked away. Wasn't able to get a shot away. Falcons with the basketball. Good block by Hoff. I wonder if Mike Simonson is happy with the pace that the Falcons are playing at right now. Here's Barry with the basketball. Get it back out to Hoff, throwing the lane to Alter, but Barry is there, missed the shot, gets her own rebound, and she is tied up, held the ball situation. It'll stay Seattle Pacific basketball. I just feel that Seattle Pacific seems a little bit disjointed offensively right now. It's easy to end up that way with this suffocating mayhem style defense. There is a nice block by Maya Hoff there that you saw. Right corner three up and good as getting the shot away Hunter Buren. 35-32 here. And an offensive foul, an illegal screen. And we've seen this a lot today in both men's and women's play that the officials are calling that screen. If you're not set, if you're doing a little jitterbug out there at all, they're going to call you on it. And you can see it right here. It's the beer and or three. Or that's the beer and three. Down floor of the basketball. Hunter handling the basketball. Bounce out to Barry. Skyler looking inside. Throws it in to a triple team. And it's stolen away by Rob. Here's Vachet down the lane. And she has the ball knocked away from her. And it is going to be, I think, Seattle Pacific basketball. Ryan McCarthy thinking that there was a foul there against his player. But the officials don't concur. Coach McCarthy wanting consistency from the yeah. officials. Well, I think that's what every coach wants. Biron, right side, Alter, Ashley brings it to the free throw line, kick it out left. Looking in the, in the tie up situation nearly as the Falcons lost the ball for a moment. And a foul going to be called before the three-point shot was taken. Rihanna Bay going to return as Evans takes a breather for UAA. Here's that last play, tie-up scramble situation for a moment. I don't know how that wasn't and traveling. Three-point shot missed. Into the corner left. That's Alter. Ashley spins on Rob, gets it inside, and again, overplaying defense, ball tipped away, and the Seawolves on the run out back the other way. End to end, missing the shot in the inside was Moore. Rebound, scrambled, bodies on the floor. Great job by Ingram on the defensive end yeah. to create another turnover. That's 13 on Seattle Pacific. If you're going to make a pass against this defense, you got to know where it's going, and you got to get it there quick. You can't take the local. This has got to be the express when it comes to the passes. You got to be decisive and you got to make that pass without any hesitation. Here is Hoff, down low, Barry laying good. That's exactly what I'm talking about is the Falcons have cut the lead to one with six seconds left in the first half. And here is a three by Morgan, a rim out, put back up at the buzzer on the put back by Ingram, but she misses it. And so the first half comes to a conclusion. And boy, oh boy, we had a wild one here in this first half. Seattle Pacific got out to big leads, but the UAA Seawolves battled back into a 27 all tie. They didn't take a lead as big as six at 35-29, but only to see the Falcons battle back and get cut the lead to one at 35-34 at the half. We'll have some halftime statistics coming up here shortly during our halftime report. But for a moment, we'll step aside. Robert Lowry, Sean Wally, courtside at Carver Gymnasium here in Bellingham. 
These are the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships presented by Under Armour and exclusively on GNAC.TV. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Welcome to NNU. For over a hundred years, we've had one goal. Make the world a better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley, and we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs? We've got a hundred of them. How does an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to 1 ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU. Here for you. Here for good.
Welcome back to Carver Gym on the campus of Western Washington University. I'm Robert Lowry, Sean Wally alongside. These are the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Quarterfinals. And as you can see there, our halftime count in tonight's finale. University of Alaska anchors 35, Seattle Pacific 34. First half numbers, well, you can see them right there. UAA winning despite hitting less than 36% from the field. Seattle Pacific losing despite hitting almost 67% from the field. Turnovers, 13. Now for Seattle Pacific, and I point that out because they had 14 field goals in the first half. 14 field goals, 13 turnovers. You cannot have a one-to-one -one ratio of made shots to turnovers if you have any aspirations to knock off the University of Alaska Anchorage. Though, to their credit, the Falcons moved the ball quite well with those 11 assists. In terms of some individual numbers, Natalie Hoff, 15 points leading the way for the Falcons. Ashley Alter, only four in the first half. Maya Hoff with four. Anna Eddy had five. And Hunter Biren with four in the first half. Skylar Berry with two in the latter stages of that second quarter that rounds out the Falcons scoring. For the University of Alaska Anchorage, 11 points for Vache Rab, including six of six from the free throw line. Nate Sagan, sports information at the University of Alaska Anchorage, came down at uh, half and we were talking a bit. He noted that Rab, in her last six games and this first half here, how's she doing from the free throw line? 49 of 51. 49 of 51, that's tremendous. Rab that's 11 impressive. leading the way. Six points by Rachel Ingram. After that, Anaya Moore with four, and then a handful of players with three. Hajdukovic with three, John Hajdukovic with three. Kate Robertson with three. Nicole Pinckney with three. Haley Burfield has three. And two points for Jazz Evans, just two in the first half. That's a little bit of a surprise because uh, Evans has played well in the previous games against Seattle Pacific. As a matter of fact, in the first game of the year, she had 11 points off the bench for the Seawolves. And then she had 14 points in their meeting just uh, back on the 23rd of February, but again, she held to just two points, but again, UAA with the 35 to 34 lead here as we get set to head into half number two. But I want to reiterate once again, you can't do, this is exactly what UAA wants. They don't care if you shoot 99% from the floor. If you're turning it over every time one-on-one -on -one to every shot you, weigh, you make, again, 50% of your possessions go to turnovers. That's exactly what they, that's what they, that's their bread and butter. I guess that's the best way to put it. Seeing the turnover numbers must be making Ryan McCarthy smile. Oh, yeah. And his team has to be very positive with as good as their defense is. The fact that they're only shooting 34%, they're in the lead. So if they can shoot just a little bit better, the second half looks bright for UAA. Conversely, Seattle Pacific, they can't panic. They're only down by a single point, and they led for a great deal of the first half here tonight. Take care of the basketball. Continue to try to shoot the ball well. I don't know if you're going to be able to go 67% uh, from the field in the second half, but try to do that. And again, if you can limit the turnovers, you might be able to shoot yourself into a, a victory. Alaska anchored to the basketball to begin the second half. This is Nicole Pinckney. Rab is also in there. The great steal, though, on an entry pass is taking the basketball away was Hunter Biren. And now she's into the forecourt, guarded by Evans. 
Both Hoff sisters are back in for Seattle Pacific. That is Maya gets it from Natalie, lays it up and in. Surprised there was no late whistle there. Well, they're letting them play here tonight without question. Here's Pinckney, takes it down the left side. Looks for help, nobody home. Gets it out to Hajukovic. Now down low, Robertson spins. Guarded by Hoff. Back out to Evans, comes around the screen. Shot clock in single digits. And she gets it to Robertson. And she knocks down the medium range jump shot, 37-36. Robertson, Robertson with five on the evening. Robertson, not a big offensive threat for the Seawolves, but that was a nice looking jumper. And here is a pass underneath the hoop to Natalie Hoff. She spins and puts it up and in. Natalie Hoff, the bread and butter for SPU tonight. Now with 17, they need to run their offense through her. And now here's an offensive foul as it was, you can see it here, the pass in to Hoff who gets possession and spins. Jana Hajukovic was guilty of that offensive foul. And now Seattle Pacific sees the second wave of UAA players come in. Vishay Rab, the only starter remaining on the floor. Biren with it to Alter at the free throw line. Hand back off to Biren. Takes it down the left lane. Kick it out to the right side down low. Here is Hoff to a cutter and laying it up and in on the inside. Great passing is Ashley Alter. That was an impressive set by the Falcons. Alter left alone in the lane. Three point lead for SPU. Ingram off right, Bay. Now to Rob, crashes down the left side, turns, spins, and shoots and hits it. Nice move by Rob in the lane. Well, I tell you, what a find the transfer from Ms. Augustana. Hoff into the forecourt. Maya off to Biren. Hunter across the top to Alter. She's left wide open. Now passes to Hoff. Natalie to the left side. Pull up pop on the baseline. And here is a run out on the missed shot by Eddie. Seattle Pacific down floor and a foul called as Anaya Moore went down floor. And she was fouled in transition. You can see Moore getting ahead of steam. And Hoff fouls her from behind, reached in and got her on the left arm. Moore lucky there the foul was committed because she almost lost that basketball. Well, had the foul not been committed, I'm not sure she was going to be able to gather herself and successfully make the lay-in. Here is Evans going to shoot a three ball and hit it. A pretty shot from Jazz Evans. That was string music for Jazz right there. I see what you did there. Hey, Here is Alter with the basketball. To Hoff, shoots a quick three and misses it. Rebound, scramble, and Seattle Pacific just throws it off the leg of Pinckney to keep the possession. Seattle Pacific doing a nice job to break the press. The mayhem defense from UAA had the open shot in the corner, but Hoff missed it. Seattle Pacific gets the ball into Biren, who's running the point here tonight for the most part for the Falcons. Now to the high post, it is... Natalie Hoff goes behind the back on the dribble. Three on the Two right angle shoot. here is Biren going to crash in the lane and get the shot off right before. No, it's going to be an offensive foul. Boy, I tell you, Biren is upset. That was a situation. Let's watch the replay here. You can't really see the clock. She gets the shot off and then crashes into the defender. I'm not so sure that... Mike Simonson, the head coach for Seattle Pacific right now, is not saying, okay, on the foul, but maybe count the basket, because the ball was clearly out of the hands. He's definitely in conversation right now yep. with one of our officials. 
And I, I don't think I would have disagreed whether they called it that way, but what we've done now is we've come to a pause in play. 6.39 left to go in quarter number three. It is UAA 42, Seattle Pacific 40. These are the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. There's a good look at the Seattle Pacific University bench. Mike Simonson there, along with his assistants and players in this 42-40 UAA lead with 6.39 left to go in this third quarter. Shooting in this third, UAA three of three, Seattle Pacific three of five. So Seattle Pacific continuing its hot shooting on the night, 17 of 26, 65% from the field. UAA is increasing its, uh, its percentage. It's now crawled up to 40% even on 14 of 35. So Seattle Pacific has made three more field goals on nine less attempts, but they've also turned the ball over 14 times on the night. The good news for SPU, that's only one turnover so yeah. far in the second half. Yeah, no, that's that's good news for the Falcons. And they, they were handling the press, I thought, very good to begin this second half. But saying that, the pressure that UAA wants to put on you, it's just, uh, it's just grueling. Daunting. Yeah, you have to go up against somebody who is guarding you 94 feet all night long, and that's... That's got to be very tiring. Leslie Smith went and said something to Mike Simonson. You can see he's shaking his head. He, he's laughing. Trying to laugh. But I don't know if he's laughing. <laughs> no, he's taking a look at himself up there on the big screen. Official Leslie Smith talking to the scorer's table right now. So hopefully we'll get an announcement of what is happening. Well, I know this, that still 42-40 is the count. It's Alaska Anchorage basketball. And it's going to be Nicole Pinckney bringing it down floor. Pinckney out of Chugiak, Alaska, stayed in her native state to play collegiately. She gets the ball back. And she takes a perimeter shot that's no good. Biren with the rebound and advances out of backcourt. Had a path to the hoop, maybe, but decided against pursuing it. Here is Hoff down floor. Natalie to Maya launches the three and way offline. Awkward looking shot. Down floor, quickly Evans gets it in the right corner. She'll penetrate, pass in, and the ball knocked away. She was looking for Kamani Fernandez, and I think it was knocked away by Biren coming down to help side defensively. Yeah, Evans had a good idea, except for the fact that Beeren was in the way. Yeah. Ill-advised pass. Inbounds. Fernandez now handles. Head of the key. Evans, little shake and bake, move it in the lane, missed the shot. Rebound, Beeren going to run it out one more time. Three on four. Nobody to pass to, so they're going to set it back up with Hoff. Down the lane, actually a quick pass out for a three by Eddie, and she can't come away with it. And now here is Pinckney into the forecourt. She's directing traffic. 
As the substitutes getting ready to come in for UAA one more time. Evans around a high screen, free throw pop, comes up short. Rebound, Seattle Pacific with it. Open jumper for Evans, got to yep. hit that in a two-point ball game. Alter brings it into the forecourt. They work it to Beeren for three. Going to rim in and out, no good. Rebound tipped. Evans, though, comes away with it for the Seawolves. Down floor they come. Crossover. Nice job robbed to Fernandez, and Kamani puts it in. Rob, Rob with showing the she's got a pass. very good, good sense of the game out there. She made a tremendous pass. Alter spins at the free throw line, bounce down low, ball knocked away from Hoff. Evans comes away with it. Down floor, and here is Ingram with a two point miss on the right side. And then a rebounding foul situation called against Pinckney for the Seawolves. And here comes five new players for the Seawolves as Robertson returns. Also, Hajdukovic back in. Rihanna Bay has returned. Anaya Moore and Haley Burfield. Those are the five on floor now for UAA. In the backcourt here is Hoff, comes across the timeline. Lob up ahead, bad pass, stolen away by Burfield. Down floor, Moore. They work it to the near side. Bay, back to the far side to Hadukovic. Hadukovic going to take a three in the corner and hit it. One of the of best three-point shooters in the GNAC. You can't leave her wide open. 10-0 run for the Seawolves for their biggest lead of the night of seven. And a foul called as Barry got the entry pass and Skyler was fouled. And the foul against the Seawolves, Kate Robertson. You can see Robertson comes in and, well, bumps her and fouls her. Make that Hudukovic. So Hudukovic with the foul. SPU has not scored since the 8-16 mark, almost five minutes. And at the free throw line, Skyler Berry trying to put an end to that drought with the free throw, and she does. Skyler, just the sophomore. Boy, two nice looking free throws for her there to cut the lead back to five. This is a, with the exception of a few, this is also a young Seattle Pacific team. You're gonna see a lot of these faces back next year as well. Little weave action out top side by UAA. Just to relieve any Seattle Pacific defensive pressure. Burfield takes a runner on the left side, misses it. Seattle Pacific rebound. Eddie down floor, crossover dribble. Looks inside, goes to the high post. That's Maya Hoff. Out to Biren. Hunter lobs it to the corner, and the ball tipped away. And then a turnover back to Seattle Pacific as Alaska Anchorage. They were able to get the basketball, but then traveled with it. Jazz Evans going to come back in for Alaska Anchorage and also after a real brief breather on the bench. Vichay Robb is returned. Here is Beeren, bounce to the high post. Hoff takes it down the right side. Now to a three-point shooter in Haley Marlowe. And Marlowe knocks it down and Seattle Pacific back to within two points. Here is Barry, or make that Ingram. Rob. Moore looking to direct traffic. She'll take it down the lane, kick it into the corner. Ingram's three, good. That was a great draw and dish. And it gives the Seawolves again a five point advantage. 
They should keep shooting threes. They're shooting 69% from behind the arc. Maya Hoff going to take it down the lane, tries to get the shot away, and Evans fouls her. And to the free throw line now is Maya Hoff, 6'2 sophomore out of Beaverton. You can see her take it down the lane. Evans got her across the arm, but she tried to go up with a left hander off the window. So Maya Hoff now steps up to the stripe. Maya, 69% free throw shooter this year. And this, uh, she is stepping to the line for her first opportunity tonight. Free throw, off line right. Seattle Pacific had a high of a four game winning streak at the end of 2022 into 2023. Next one by Hoff is good. This was a one point game at the half. UAA with the lead. Right now they have a four point advantage, 50-46, with 155 left in the third. Seattle Pacific normally only allows 58 points per game. UAA already at 50. And still a quarter plus to go. Pinckney for the basketball. Here is Rob for three, good. That was a big three point shot by Vichay Rob. The Falcons again trail by seven. This has been the big lead of the contest for UAA. And here's gonna, a bad pass stolen away. That was a, a careless pass. Rob doing it on both ends of the floor. She has 16 points tonight and that knockdown of the pass. Yeah, Weatherspoon with the pass well short and the turnover gives the Falcons the ball back to the Seawolves looking for their big lead of the night. Ingram. Four to shoot. Oh, here's Evans. Get it up, missed the shot, air ball. Skyler Berry with the rebound for the Falcons. Beeren out of backcourt with a weaving dribble. Goes to the top of the circle to Weatherspoon. And off to Marlowe, into Berry who lays it in. That's how you beat the defense, penetrate and dish. There's just a fractional difference on the shot and the game clock, less than a second. About six tenths is what it appears, and the Seawolves are gonna try to use all that time. Pinckney with seven to a backdoor cut. Evans underneath the hoop. Ooh, nice and block. And she is fouled as she went up with the shot. The ball hit the nothing but the underneath of the support but she was fouled on the shot and with 2.3 seconds left, you can see that was a great pass underneath. Evans went up with it and missed it. Foul called against the Falcons against Weatherspoon. And Evans to the free throw line now. 69% free throw shooter. Free throw up, good. 54, 48, six, 2.3 seconds left, we should say. And the next one is good as well. 55, 48, 2.3 seconds left. Time for a shot here. I've seen, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. Get it to Biren, but it's not going to happen there when you don't even have the opportunity to shoot. That's, that's not a dribble situation. That's a pass situation, pass, pass, and then take a long one, but didn't happen there. So we're through three complete here at Carver Gymnasium in Bellingham. It's UAA 55, Seattle Pacific 48, the GNAC Women's Basketball Championships on GNAC.tv. Central is a great place to learn to make yourself better. 
I was worried coming here as a transfer student and as a first-gen student that I would feel a little alone or a little nervous to make friends. But the physics department has been incredible. They've all been so welcoming. And they're providing me with the tools and the knowledge I need to improve myself after the education part is done. So when it comes to getting professionally certified, Central prepares us directly for that. Well, the final 10 minutes of basketball action for the day before us here. Fourth quarter play, UAA against Seattle Pacific. Women's quarterfinal action here in Carver Gymnasium, the GNAC Women's Basketball Championships. Robert Lowry, Sean Wally alongside. And this has been a game that UAA has slowly kind of chipped away. They outscored Seattle Pacific 20 to 14 to lead it now by seven heading into the fourth quarter. Here is Beeren, brings it across the timeline on Bay's defense to the high post to Barry, back out to Beeren. She drives and she is fouled as she went to the hoop. Bay, I think, is gonna be guilty of the foul. Should be a non-shooting foul. Here's the penetration. Yeah, Bay just got her with a little bit of the, the right knee. Beeren going to make the throw in, gets it to Hoff. Maya moves in, puts it off the window for two. Maya Hoff made it look easy. Five There's point lead for Seawolves. Seattle Pacific defensively, if they stayed man to man, you haven't seen a, a hint of zone out of them tonight. Here's Alter with the basket on the defense against Pinckney with the basketball to Rob. Back to Pinckney, to Rob behind the arc, shoots the three, it'll skim off the rim, and the rebound taken down by Barry. She's done a nice job in relief of Natalie Hoff here tonight. Here is Beeren, picks up the basketball, bounces it, Hoff, entry pass to Barry, and she is fouled by Fernandez. Kamani that time just got caught inside, and Barry at 6-3 has a distinct height advantage over the 5'10 Fernandez, and Fernandez drawn into the foul. Robertson, Evans, and Moore return for UAA. Seattle Pacific, Barry, hands off to Biren at the free throw line right. She's trapped. Get it out for a three-pointer that's down the bottom of the well by Anna Eddy. Ryan McCarthy knew that was not a good thing for his team. A great shot for three from SPU, and now they can tie it or take the lead. Hoff across the timeline to Beeren with the basketball. You got to give it to Seattle Pacific. Boy, oh boy, they have battled this one tonight. Here is Hoff down the left lane, put it up in the left hand, and we're tied. It's a 7-0 run this quarter for SPU to tie the game. Tied up at 55 here with 8.17 left. Sea Near side, hit. Evans with the basketball. Seawolves yet to score in the fourth. Robertson turns, tries to hook her way around Barry, and she lost the ball, and I think Barry going to be called for the foul. She will be. How was that hook not called? Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, we, we had a great view of it. You, can't you see that, see left, that left arm, arm there? Right. Yeah. At the free throw line now, Kate Robertson trying to again put UAA into the lead. She won't do it there though. She misses the front end of the two shot opportunity. Robertson just one of three from the free throw line now tonight. First, first point of the fourth quarter for the Seawolves. They take the lead back. So they went nearly two minutes without scoring. 
Seawolves have a little bit of foul difficulty, though they play so many. Jana Hajdukovic has four fouls. She's currently on the bench. Here is Beeren goes down floor, misses the shot in the lane. Boy, oh boy, that was a big one to miss. Down floor, Evans, basketball far side. Get it out to Pinckney, head of the key to Rob. Lift fake and a penetrate. Going to put it up, and she'll miss the shot. Rebound tipped around. Evans picks it up. She goes in the lane. Kick it out left for Pinckney's three. No good. And a foul situation, a three free throw situation coming on the foul on the perimeter by Hunter Buren. That's going to send a Pinckney to the free throw line for three shots. Great job there by Fernandez to save that basketball for UAA. And, yeah, Buren... Did make contact with the body. Hard to stop your momentum and avoid the player when you're right even with her. Pinckney's first of three is good. Pinckney, just a 61% free throw shooter. And matter of fact, she's only taken 18 free throws the entire year, 18 free throw attempts. She hits two here, though. And trying to complete the trifecta, and she will not do it. So 58-55 is the count. Seven and a half left. Marlowe with the basketball, bounce to the high post. That's Maya Hoff. Natalie is back in. Maya stepped through, get it off to Natalie, lays it up, misses the shot, but she's fouled. A great job by Maya to find her sister, Natalie. Yeah. Spinning in the lane, the pirouette, and the dish. Well, there she is, taking it down the lane, does the 360, get it to Natalie, and Natalie just came up just this much short. But she has an opportunity to shoot a couple of free throws now. And she makes the first. Interesting to notice, first game was close. Last game of the night, close. Yeah. Two in the middle, not so much. But I'll tell you one thing, whether close or not, they've all been in entertaining games today. 58-57. Pinckney gets it back, takes it to the baseline, cut off by Marlowe. Out high, Rab. Back out for Ingram's three, and she hits it. That was pretty. Rachel Ingram hit nothing but net. Four-point lead for UAA. Hoff down floor. Maya going to bring it across the timeline herself. She'll take it down the lane, and she'll draw a foul as Rab tried to cut off her path to the bucket. Yeah, it's going to be a blocking foul. Ryan McCarthy wanted the charge, didn't get it as we take another look at it. And now they're saying... The Alaska Anchorage bench is saying that shouldn't be a shooting foul. Well, I agree. I don't think that she was in the act of shooting. Yeah, they're going to take it out of bounds. That is the right call. She was going to shoot, but she had not started her uh, her shot just yet. So the throwing going to be made on the baseline, and here's Marlowe with it. She'll trigger it in to Hoff in the corner. Out high, Alter, Ashley looks for some somebody to get it to. Now to Natalie Hoffer, jumper in the lane, no good, and Rob comes down with the rebound. She's trapped for a moment, spins away from the defense and brings it down floor herself. Now Pinckney with it. Free throw pull up, pop by her is good. Six point lead for UAA. And approaching the six-minute mark in the contest. Pinckney now with seven on the night. Hoff into the forecourt, lob up ahead to Alter. Leaves for Marlowe's three, and it's good. Haley Marlowe, the Spokane product, knocks down the long range. They're going to call to two. No, that's her second three-pointer. Her second three-pointer three of the night. six points, both three-pointers. Here is Rab with the basketball to Ingram, who just hit that three a moment ago. Pinckney back to Rab. Pinckney has a screen, uses the Fernandez pick to the free throw line left, pull up pop, bounce off the rim. Fernandez somehow came up with the rebound, ball knocked away. 
No, actually before the ball got knocked away, UAA called a quick timeout. Fernandez. So 525 left to go here in this fourth quarter. These are the 2023 GNAC Women's Basketball Championships. Welcome to NNU. For over a hundred years, we've had one goal. Make the world a better place. It's all happening here, the Boise Valley, and we're smack in the middle of it. Challenging programs, we've got a hundred of them. How does an average class size of 17 sound? Professors who actually care? We're talking a 15 to one ratio. Trust us, they care. We're NNU, here for you, here for good. University of Alaska Anchorage with a pull-up jumper there by Nicole Pinckney. And there is the long-range three by Haley Marlowe just a moment ago. A couple of baskets, part of the action you're enjoying here on GNAC.TV tonight. It's UAA out of bounds on the end line. They get it into Robertson. She has a shot off the rim, no good. Good feed into her, and she had a good luck, but she just wasn't able to come up with it. Here is Beeren to Hoff. Natalie cross-courts it. You don't want to do that against UAA. And then a foul called is trying to get the errant pass was Marlowe, and she picks up the foul. You, you don't want to go cross-court against this team. And you can see they're right there why because they're overplaying the passing lanes everywhere. Moore with it. Anaya with a handoff dribble, and boy, bad handoff dribble taken away by Seattle Pacific. Beeren into the forecourt. Leaves behind her for Marlowe. Inside five minutes left in this one. Hoff, pass out, and saving it before it goes across the timeline was Beeren. Hunter, near side, Marlowe. Back out to the top to Alter. She's been kind of quiet here tonight. Spins, shoots, and misses it. Alter with just six points here tonight. Long down floor pass to Evans underneath the hoop. Not able to get the shot away, but goes into the corner. Three ball on the way. Bounces in and out for Beerfield. Evans, or make that more tied up on the offensive rebound. It'll stay, Seattle, it'll stay uh, UAA basketball. And now we have come to a full timeout. 63-60 with 4.18 remaining in this contest. These are the 2023 Great Northwest Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championships presented by Under Armour here on GNAC.TV. Located in the heart of the Willamette Valley, Western Oregon University is close to everything. Find your place. Find your people. Find your path. Find Western. Western Oregon University. Great education, sweet location. trying to eavesdrop on Ryan McCarthy during that last time out. And I think the thing that he's more upset about than anything is the lack of communication on the defensive end. Get a look there at Western Washington. The women's team is here scouting their next opponent. 
They will play the winner of this game tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. I'm going to tell you something right now. They don't know who their opponent is tomorrow night. Not yet. Four minutes to find out. And here's a desperation shot to beat the shot clock by Hajdukovic. Seattle Pacific clears the rebound. And trying to cut into this three-point edge. Maya Hoff off to, off to Alter. Cross courts it deep right side to Biren. Biren circles, gets it down low, and here is Hoff being fouled on the inside. I, I don't think that's the worst foul that you could give right there because Hoff was going to have a lay-in if you didn't do something. That was a great feed by Biren. You can see it. She turned the corner, drew the double team, got it off to Hoff, and actually that was a pretty good defensive play, I thought, there by Beerfield. She got her on the arm, but that was really a, a knockaway. Great court awareness by Barron, and she hasn't done a lot scoring tonight. She only has four points, but she's done so much more. She has five rebounds, five assists, one steal. The one issue, she does have four fouls, the one person in foul trouble for SPU. Yeah. On the other side, UAA, four fouls. That's Hajdukovic. Free throws by Hoff are both down the bottom of the twine, and that's a one-point game with three and a half left. Pinckney with a basketball across the top. Rob got it to Hajdukovic. Back to Rob. Looks and goes to Evans. Ball nearly knocked away by Alter. Now here is Evans with it across the top again to Pinckney. Ryan McCarthy I pleading with his team to move. Here is Rab with a runner in the lane, and she shoots the air ball. Yeah, I think the I think one of the skids went out from underneath her there as she was shooting because she looked like she slipped just a little bit, and I think that really threw her shot off. And you could hear the SPU bench wanting a travel there, but they didn't get it. Well, I don't know if it was a travel, but she she certainly didn't hit or make a shot like she usually would. And here is Hoff. And she shoots the shot in the lane, misses it. Alter with the offensive rebound. Seattle Pacific looking to regain the lead with 2.40 left in the contest. Here is Alter, or make that Beeren with a runner in the lane off the window. It's good, and Seattle Pacific back on top, 64-63 with 2.30 to go in the contest. Beeren, the sophomore, coming up large. Here is Evans. Rab attacks the rack and loses Ouch. the basketball. Oh, no. Scramble oh, and no. a ball knocked oh, out no. of bounds as Rab looks like she twisted her knee as she went down on the floor. And she's going to get some attention by the trainer here. Let's go ahead and talk about what lies in store for basketball fans tomorrow here. Let's uh, talk a little bit about the, the games earlier today in men's quarterfinal action. First game of the contest, or our first game of the four contests today. Northwest Nazarene, the sixth seed, came up with an upset of Seattle Pacific, 82-74. to So tomorrow, the number six uh, Nighthawks will take on Montana State Billings. That game will begin tomorrow's action at noon here in Carver Gymnasium. Second game today, Central Washington, the number four seed against number five, Western Oregon. Central Washington, an 80-66 to 66 men's victory. And tomorrow they will take on the top-seeded Saints of St. Martin's University. Earlier women's action tonight, Central Washington, the number three seed, an 88-62 victory over Simon Frazier. And now Alaska Anchorage and Seattle Pacific. It looks like Rab did twist that knee a little bit. She's probably not going to return anytime soon in this contest. A little mop-up work being done on the slippery or the wet spot now on the floor to prevent anybody else from slipping. But the good news is, is Rab is walking back to the trainer's table, but she is walking there with just a little bit assisted, pretty much under her own power. That looked ugly in real time. And yeah. Oof, she's putting a little bit of weight on it, but walking very gingerly. And down floor, Biren with a one-point lead and two minutes now left in the contest. 
Here is Hoff. Natalie with it. Behind the back on the dribble. Kick it out to Biren. Penetrates. Goes in the lane. Ball stripped away. She picks it back up. Shot clock at eight. She needs to do some with the basketball. Gets it to a cutter. Laying it up and in in the lane. It's Anna Eddy. Eddy coming up big. The slasher in the lane. Three-point lead for SPU. And Seattle Pacific in a 9-0 run. Here's Hadukovic. Hadukovic with the jump shot, making it a one-point game as we're at the 90-second mark in the contest. Hoff down floor. Maya goes down low to Natalie. Powers in the lane. Puts it up with the left hand, misses the shot. Robert, it's sad. Pickney down floor. It's sad. One of these teams' season will end in just over a minute. Hadukovic, Evans, left to Pinckney. We're at the 60-second mark as Pinckney kicks it out to Evans. Crashes down the lane. Out for a three ball that's going to bounce off the rim, and the Falcons come down with the missed shot. 66-65, Seattle Pacific. Here is Hoff, Maya out high. She's had a nice game in the second half. She spins, gets it down low, shot in the lane, up and good by Alter. Ashley hasn't had a big night, but boy, oh boy, she had a big shot there. And the Falcons lead it by three, 68-65. Final 25 seconds. Taking it to the baseline, Beerfield. And here is a shot blocked, going for three, Hadukovic. And Hadukovic had the shot blocked by Eddie. Now with 10 seconds left, the Falcons with the basketball, no foul. Falcons what with are four, they doing? three. And finally a foul called with 3.9 seconds. How many seconds went off, about 20? 18 to 20 Easily. seconds went off the clock. Get a look at the fans for Seattle Pacific. They're loving things right now, up three. Well, and maybe more. How right here, huge. right here you could put the nail in this one. How huge has Anna Eddy been in the last minute alone? Well, she can be really huge here. She hits one of these two free throws. Oh. Leaving. Well, that one meant nothing, really. A little bit of room for UAA. That one makes it a 69-65 lead for Seattle Pacific. 3.9 seconds left officially on the clock here. Plenty of time for a three-point shot, but what you need is you need a three and you need a quick foul. And with here is the three ball for... The Falcons by Marlowe. Eddie with the bucket. Eddie with two in a and row. And then Alter with the basket there. And then here is the big block. That that was a huge block on Hajdukovic, who, as you mentioned, one of the leading three-point shooters in the GNAC. 11 points for Eddie. Four of eight shooting, the one steal, one block, huge. Well, the Falcons for the game, still shooting 60.5%. Ball in the hands of UAA, throw in from the side court. Here's a lob cross court. Here's a missed three-point shot. And is that gonna do it? I think there's still there's still going to be some time on the clock. I, I don't. I think it's academic at this point with Seattle Pacific up by four. Are right, the officials going to take a look here? Both teams around their respective coaches. So apparently a timeout has been taken. Actually, the timeout Official is taken review. as the officials are going to take a look. Yeah. I don't know how that wasn't a foul on. Well, there was contact. Well, there was, on the, there was on the contact shot. on the shot by UAA. But boy, Granted, oh boy. They would need to make the shot, which they did not, and have a four-point play opportunity. Yeah. The only possibility of anything worthwhile for the Seawolves. 
Just a, a terrible final minute for UAA. Let, let, let's call a spade a spade. They, they didn't certainly uh, manage the clock very well. Be, uh, allowing about, seconds yeah, sure. about 18 seconds to come off the clock without fouling. So they're going to put point six on the clock. Now, uh, I don't know whose basketball it is. I'm, apparently it's going to be UAA basketball, I think. As yeah, the shot was, uh, that's indeed the case. So you got an opportunity with point six to get away a three. And here's the inbounds to Fernandez, free throw line pop, it's no good. And Seattle Pacific University pulls an upset of sorts here tonight as they beat the University of Alaska Anchorage number five, upsetting number four, 69-65 is the final count. University of Alaska Anchorage concludes its season while Seattle Pacific now will advance to tomorrow's GNAC semifinals to take on top-seeded Western Washington University. So a big win for Mike Simonson and his SPU program and the University of Alaska Anchorage. They conclude their season with a mark of 18 and 10. Seattle Pacific improves to 15 and 12 overall and momentarily we're going to have the opportunity to turn things over to Sean Wally with an interview with the victorious head coach of Seattle Pacific, Mike Simonson. Leading scorer tonight, Vishay, Vishay Rob was 16, leading the way for UAA. 21 for Natalie Hoff, leading the way for the victorious Falcons. And now let's send it courtside to Sean Wally. Here with Mike Simonson, Victoria, Seattle Pacific. Congratulations on the win. We didn't know what was going to happen until the final minute. Uh, it's a hard fought game. Our conference is so tough. Uh, every team, there's so much parity. Um, our team just kept fighting, fighting, fighting. Anchorage fought too. I mean, it was a hard fought basketball game. We need to get some rest after this one. But that was a fun game, really fun game. You played them tough throughout the season. They beat you twice, but you get them when it counts. Yeah, you know, one thing we just talked about is it's hard to beat a team that before in the history of this GNAC tournament. So uh, we were really confident going into this game, but we knew it wasn't going to be easy. And that was a fight, and we got Anchorage's best punch for sure, and we had to get down and get stops and get scores to win the game. How tough is it to play against a team with that mayhem-style defense? It's tough. I mean, I've been going against it for years, two years as assistant, now five as a head coach. That's the first time we've gotten them. That's how hard it is. I mean, Ryan's done a remarkable job up there for years, and so it is hard, it is hard, and I'm so proud of my fifth-year seniors to finally get a win against the last Anchor. so we're pretty happy. How long do you give yourself and your team to celebrate because you got a tough one tomorrow night against host Western Washington? I mean, the coach of me says the car ride home, <laughs> but uh, we'll be watching film on Western tonight. We'll, we'll celebrate, we'll feel good, um, but yeah, we gotta get ready for Western. They're, they're really tough. They're really tough, and we're going to need to play good basketball tomorrow. Coach, so, congratulations. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you so much, guys. Mike Simonson, victorious Seattle Pacific. They take on Western Washington tomorrow at 7.30. Robert, over to you. Well, shooting was the name of the game here tonight. Despite turning the ball over 18 times, Seattle Pacific really cleaned up the play in the second half as they only committed four second half turnovers after 14 in the first half, or actually 13 in the first half, so five in half number two. But again, shooting tonight, Seattle Pacific for the night, 26 of 43. That is 61% from the field, 61% from the field. They're also six of 13, 46% on threes tonight, and they hit a respectable 11 of 14 from the free throw line this evening as well. 
As far as University of Alaska Anchorage is concerned, 21 of 59, just 36% from the field. They hit 11 of 20 on threes, 12 of 15 from the free throw line. But, Sean, as you were walking over, I, I pointed out the fact that Seattle Pacific, we talked about it at the half. You can't have 14 baskets and 13 turnovers like Seattle Pacific did in the first half. In the second half, they only committed five turnovers. That's really taking care of the basketball against a, a – you, you I don't think you can do better than turning the ball over five times against this kind of pressure in any half of basketball whatsoever. Let's give you some of the individual numbers, first of all, for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Vishay Robb, 16 points, leading the way. She is 6 of 6 from the free throw line tonight. She's on a string of something like uh, 53 of 55 from the free throw line to cap this season over the last six and, uh, seven games now. Rab also had six rebounds tonight. She was the only Seawolf, while well, Rachel Ingram also off the bench with 12 on four or five three-point shooting. Those were the two in the double figures tonight for UAA. Jana Hajdukovic with eight points. Seven points, Nicole Pickney and Jazz Evans. Six points tonight for Kate Robertson. Three for Burfield as Haley checked in with three off the bench. Four points, I went right by Anaya Moore with four. And Kamani Fernandez with the two for the University of Alaska Anchorage. For Seattle Pacific, Natalie Hoff led the way with 21 points. She too was six of six from the free throw line tonight. 11 points each for her sister Maya Hoff and Anna Eddy. Six points for Haley Marlowe and Skyler Berry. And six as well for Haley Biren. And that wraps up the scoring for Seattle Pacific University as they get the victory here tonight. So tomorrow now, the field is set. At noon tomorrow, men's action. Montana State Billings, number two against number six, Northwest Nazarene. That'll be our first game, followed by the second men's semi tomorrow. It'll be top-rated St. Martin's against number four, Central Washington. And then in the women's draw at 5.15 tomorrow night, Montana State Billings, number two, against number three, Central Washington. And now, with tonight's victory, Alaska Anchorage goes home. Seattle Pacific goes on to take on top-ranked Western Washington, 69 to 65 the win tonight and that'll be the matchup SBU against Western Washington tomorrow. It's been a great day. It's gone by fast. Has today gone by fast? Surprising. Surprisingly so Robert. You know we did it. Well, we survived. Four basketball games. Four more tomorrow. A big thank you to our entire GNAC.TV crew. A lot of them have been here 12 plus hours. You've been here long as well. We've all been here at least eight, nine, ten hours. So goodness let's do it again we had so much fun let's do it again tomorrow we will and we'll be here tomorrow with uh, the tip off at noon we'll be on the air just about 11:50 tomorrow and now for sean wally and for the gnac.tv crew i'm robert lowry thank you for joining us tonight and we'll see you tomorrow at noon here for the 2023 great northwest athletic conference men's and women's basketball championships